I've had this uh, wooden pendulum brought in for me to repair. Um, what's happened is it's absorbed some moisture, it's, the timbers have moved a bit, the um, string that runs around it has caught on one of the fibres or something that was has moved on one of the joints. It's and it's thrown basically it's thrown this thing on the floor. So um, yeah, it's time to repair it. So I'll put you in the stand and then we'll get on with repairing it. Right, it's a little bit messy. It's a little bit untidy. Um, let's scrape some glue off there first. So there's some old glue on here. So you always want to remove as much of the old glue as possible. Don't, um, don't just think that you can glue over glue. It never works. And that, that bit just there, can you see all right? Right, well I'll do this for you here, uh, can you see? So I'm just going to get in there, in fact if I go that way, oh look at that little shaving, let's move that out of the way. And that's sort of what you want, you want, you want a very thin shaving, so that's good. Oh that's great. Right, that's that done. There is some. Do, 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 do. Why is it exposure and what's it locked? Have I pressed a button? Oh, hang on. Is that any better? I think that's better. Right, there's a bit of wood on the edge of that lip there. That's all right. I've cleaned that off. That's all right. Need this end so that where that joints up against there, I need that end cleaned up. So I'm just going to take the glue off there. So that's good. There you go. And I've got to take the glue off this bit as well. See um, that area there. So I just want to clean the glue off that end grain there and some of the glue from around here. So let's get rid of that and that. There's some tiny little lumps of, of glue and it's great to remove them because um, you're exposing the natural fibres of the timber and that will glue much better. There you go. Keeping these bits. Right, next. Let's just try that in there, see what it looks like. Oh, sorry. Oh, well, you, you could be here a bit. I was just doing that. That fits okay. I'm going to glue that now. I'm going to glue that one piece at a time. All right, let's get some glue on it. Type bond three, great glue. Too much glue. Probably, but a little bit of paper folded in half to um, run this glue around. And I'm also going to do that bit there because, get those fibres there. There you go, just in there. That's for that tiny bit there. So I'm going to get this one in first. And I'm going to wrap that in. I've got no masking tape. My masking tape's run out. Uh, I'm just going to wrap it in sellotape for now. And uh, and we will see how how we go with that. So put that there. The good thing about 
sellotape is you can it stretches and you can get a real good pull on it that's great can you see it all all the glue is in out there by my thumb that's really good not much oozing out of there so you know what i'm gonna put a bit back in there i want the glue to do its job What I don't really want to do is I don't want to sand this down after because this clock is a number of years old and it will um, it'll change the colour of it. And I'm not changing the colour of it. There you go, look at that. So you see the stretch on the on the sellotape. Underrated sellotape really is a holding mechanism. Everybody seems to go for masking tape. So this one's a bit tricky. I'm just going to put that there uh, and pull that that way. The good thing is once you start sticking the sellotape to itself, it really does hold. Now this will all get cleaned off, so I'm not worried about that. Uh, that's looking pretty good. I'm just going to try now. Um, can you see that? That has got to go in just there. So let's see how I do. Um, what have I got? There's a, there's a little drill bit there that'll do. So let's see what we can do. Can't really show you guys what's going on because I'm trying to do it, see myself. There you go. Pushed it up against there. Brilliant. Pushed it up against there. Use the drill bit. Brilliant. Chuff with that. That's great. Oh, I'm pleased with that. Just getting the, the old glue out with the with the um, the old glue, the new glue with the drill bit. The good thing is, you know what I'm going to do now? Ah, oh, I can feel it. You can feel what's gone wrong. The the drill bit. Look, the drill bit goes in there, but look at that. It's tightened up there. It's all moved around. Oh, look, I can't even get that out. Good grief. Okay, and then it's loose there. Right, okay, these opposite, these some of these have, have moved too much. Can't get the drill in there. Right, okay, I can see what's going on now. Uh, next bit to glue is this. So let's try and glue this now while I'm still here. Um, there you go. Not too much glue. Not not tons. Well, it is too much, but don't plaster it in it. I'm going to take a lot of this off. And you know what? When there's been a break, if you can. It doesn't hurt to put it on both pieces because you don't know where it's going to get squeezed from. I didn't on the other one, but that was big enough. This is a, quite a small piece. Right, and in you go. There you go. Look at that. Look at that. That's beautiful. I'll leave that like that. I don't think that's going anywhere. Um, I think I can clean this out after. Knowing that this gap, I mean, look how big that is there. Knowing that it's moved that much, I'm going to have to open all this up anyhow. So that's okay. So the next bit really is this bit, which is damaged but not, um, but hasn't broken away. I need to, can you see, can you see that? So I need to, can you see that? I need to break this away. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. See that drill bit there? I'm going to run some glue in there. And I'm going to ride the drill bit round until it 
closes up and if that drill bit closes up and it's put too much on here a bit too much look and then take it all back off right all back off and push it in now if I put that drill bit there if that drill bit squeezes the glue out I'll be happy wow Oh, that's pretty good. I'm be able to. I'm using that as a lever now to pull against the against the timber to try and get it back to where it was. Wow. So what I'm learning from this is this this gap in this groove isn't parallel anymore. I'm going to I think I might wrap some paper around that and make it tighter. So let's make it a bit tighter by rolling some paper around the around there and then put that on there. And let's give that a tap. Got to be careful because I'm opposite this, so I don't want to, if I put that way, that, that way around, I don't want to put it down and bang on it, tap on it. So just up against my, my there, you, there you go. There you go. That's not bad. Glue oozing out. Can you see? See these couple of spots of glue oozing out? We'll see how that goes. We'll see how that goes. It doesn't look too bad. But it looks, now I know I've got to actually open all this channel up. So that'll be the next thing. Right, there you go. So I've got a funny little drill sticking out of it. Um, got some tape all around it. I'm just going to put some, a bit more tape over the tape to stop the tape from coming undone. Because... Sellotape's all right when it's sticking to itself. So if I can do this, there you go, that'll do, that'll do. It's all going to need cleaning down anyhow. So drill bit in there to hold that. It's not brilliant, but it's not bad. It, this, it's gonna. I'm gonna go against what I've said. It's gonna have to get a light sanding, and this because this is gonna be equaled out because it's different widths but hey ho now leave it overnight right i've spent some time on it now and um what i came up with was um this thin piece of wood which is actually a blind from those blinds that you get where there's way too many um pieces on it anyhow that wrapped around a piece of I think it's 80 grit um, was actually pretty good and I didn't want to film it because I'd got a student here last night but um, I've had a really tough time improving this and getting it to the state it's in now um, I reckon I've spent an hour and a half doing this sanding it um, so what I do is turn it round and then just run that round, turn it round, and it's all, it's all pretty good now, he says. So what this is doing as well, it's, it's, is it's, um, oh come on, and it's such an awkward thing to hold. What it's doing is, sorting the groove out and these joints where there's a joint between let me come that side so i can see uh right so you see this joint here so what it's doing is it's smoothing the joint inside whoever made this didn't seal inside here so whilst it was sealed outside the moisture could get in here it could dry out these pieces of wood moved and that's why it threw it 
but it's getting there now as you can see it's been sanded a lot that bit's shining from being moved around in the voice it's a bit of shine there it's not um it's really moved all over the place i've got to say i'd be if it was mine i'd be disappointed very disappointed uh, that not as much effort has gone into this as the rest of the clock when really this is the bit that um, Keeps it going. You see in the bottom of the channel now see how it's slightly rounded Well, that can only improve it as well I think I'll just sand it now with 80 grit and then go through the grits and then show you what I'm going to do on, on finishing it So that's going to be important Okay Right, so now uh, let's get your position so you can see. So now all I'm going to do is just, uh, I've just gone over it with 80 grit. I'm just going to take the sharp edge off here because this sharp edge is the reason that it threw it. The sharp edge here and the, and the step in the, um, in the joint. So if I put a nice round on there at sort of 45 degrees, if the, if the cord decides to pull one way or the other or the weight's not quite happy at least it'll have this um, a V here by having this rounded and it will direct the cord back into the slot and we're back 120 grit round the edge and in the V again. 120 done, feels better, looks better, brilliant. Concentrate on the centre section now. Moving my hand around on the sandpaper to get the a new part of the sandpaper to work its magic. Oh, feels much better. Just going to go around the outside. Now I'm going to um, fold it over and go inside, twisting the paper slightly in the middle so that it's hopefully sanding one side and the other. Are you, are you a bit too close? Is that better? Sorry, I'm sniffing. Anyhow, that's that done. Now I'm just going to Pull it round, working on that top edge, turn it over, pull it round, work on the other top edge again, just as I said. Right, and a quick buff in this side, but I'm going to raise the grain, and what raising the grain does is we um, wet the surface. Oh, that feels so much better. Right, hang on a sec. So what raising the grain does is it um, it raises the grain. Uh, you get it damp, the, the fibres stand on end. Um, you also get to see what it's going to look like finished. Um, so it gives you an indication of whether you've got rid of all the scratches and damage and whatever. So it's not looking bad actually. That'll be, so I can feel around here, all of this has gone rough already so what it is is you raise the grain you let the fibers move around then you just deburr them again i won't deburr them with 320 i'll deburr them with 400 grit uh just give it a light sanding with that but we can see some of the damage now see that bit there that bit's not bad there's a little bit of evidence there but it's not much and then there's a crack there see that crack there just there yeah it's not bad i've not done bad really um, then there's the bit there that's showing up only because it's dried out there I can see it's drying out there quite quickly um, here's where I put that extra glue you can just see a bit of a glue line but this I take it is the back and that's the front right that's it let's let that dry off a bit doesn't hurt to give the bench a bit of a clean we'll let that dry off back in a minute so it's had a chance to dry off. It feels really rough, which is uh, which is normal. This is 400 grit, and now we just want to denib it, remove all of those 
little fibre standing up. That's much better. That's it. See this side, what's happened to you? See these spots? That's um, that's watermarks. They'll come out. There you go. Gone already. Right, just run around the outside edges and I'm going to fold that over and yes I'm going to go back in the slot over this edge and then over that edge I think that's it rough bit there Just feel that joint there. Just felt something there. So I'm just feeling for any imperfections now. Any little bits where the string might catch. That's not bad. Okay. Right. So I've um, gone over it with a cloth, which is great. I was going to use Danish oil, but instead I'm using this uh, polish that's really good for floors. It's um, and I'm going to I'm going to try and get in there first. I'm not really concerned with the outside. The outside's easy to do. But what I am concerned with is this is sealed inside there. Can you see what I'm doing? Because this is the reason it all went wrong because somebody didn't put enough polish in here or didn't put any polish in here I'd love to meet the guy that made it mm, there you go so this is a um, meth based or meth solvent of this polish and uh, I can see me giving it a couple of coats at least there you go so I might finish with a rubber or so that's it I will let that dry off then I'll do the other side What I've got is, uh, I've just come to the last part of sanding it down. I've put some white spirit on, it isn't actually a turp substitute. And I'm just taking it down. This ended up having uh, four coats on each side and of, of the polish, the floor polish, but it's hard wearing French polish. Uh, meant for floors, it's very good and that's about it that's what we're going to end up with uh, we don't want it that shiny just got to do the back one more time and what I'm going to do is um, I've got no Danish oil, I think I've said already um, so I'm just going to wax this uh, with some um, With some decent wax I've got. Make it nice. I've gone through there. You can you can see evidence inside of where I've gone through. Um, that's about it. I'm not going to do any more because I've spent I've spent a number of hours on this now, making it right. So, I and mean, as you can see, 
it looks excellent. Um, I hope he likes it. He better because there's a lot of effort gone into making this work. I'm just going to run that round the groove and then let it dry out. So if I've got to dry a bit of cloth on here, which I think I have, try and encourage this drying to happen a bit quicker. Turn it over. As you can see, it looks so much better than it did. I think he'll be pleased. There's one of the cracks there that's very obvious. But for it to go across the grain isn't nice, but hey -ho. And the groove feels great. The groove's looking really good. So um, I think I might just take some more shine off this. Yeah, I'll take some more shine off this and then it's ready. That's just a bit too, a bit too shiny for me. And as I say, it's had about six coats each side with good drying time in between. That's what you've got to remember. Make sure you leave good drying time in between. So I started this over a flipping week ago. I'm allowed to say flipping. Over a week ago I started this thing. And um, I'm just getting all the traces of dust off it. And uh, yeah, we'll leave it a few minutes now. And then, and then we'll wax it. All right, just going to get a bit of wax on it. Uh, left it to dry for a few minutes. So this is a clear paste wax. And um, I, have, I was going to use it with wire wool, but I'll see how it goes just um, with a cloth. So it's filling in all those shiny areas. I can see some of them are dulling down straight away, which is great. So it's just a matter of me t rotating it until I see the shine and then putting the wax on until the shine disappears. There we go, there's one side done. Now I'm going to hold that and do the other side. This is the back. Just the same process on both sides so that um, it's got a balance, as in, whatever you do to one side, you do it to the other. If you don't do it to the other, it'll move. Right, so it's heavily waxed now, and I'm going to run it around my hands, and I'm going to run that around the edge, and then I'm going to leave it to dry. I'm going to leave it to dry for a few minutes, and it came to me not very shiny, if you remember. It just got a satin sheen to it. So I'm not worried about um, it came to me with a satin sheen. And if I can just get something like that satin sheen back. Um, the, the French polish is so much more penetrative, even though it's sort of more of a surface finish. The first couple of coats were so penetrative. Um, that's a good sealer. And then this wax over the top is just going to be brilliant. That's it, I'm not doing any more to that now. That can dry off. Come back again later but actually it looks great like that doesn't it sometimes it does it just looks great with the um, with the uh, the wax on and then you buff it up and it doesn't it doesn't look as good sometimes I think finishes spoil timber oh it's drying already but I better not handle that there you go right back in a minute Right, it's been left about 20 minutes and it's time to 
buff it up a bit and let's see what we've got. Let's go to the back. Let's build up a bit of heat. Go around the rim as well so you can't see this. Oh, look at that. That's not bad. That's not bad. And the front might get another waxing. What do we think of that? Not bad, eh? You know what? I think that'll do. There's it's very similar to, I have to go back to the beginning of the video and have a look. I should imagine the colour is deeper uh, because of the, the way the French polish penetrates rather than the other finish. I think one more wax, but that'll do. Job done, finished. Pleased with that. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget, like, subscribe, all the other things. and. Uh,